No more fucking around. You want your life to be better? I can't help you. We can't help you. Joe Rogan can't help you. Ari can't help you. Only you can fucking help you. Grab your fucking ball, get a fucking notebook, and write down what the fuck you're gonna do this year. And this is it. You're not gonna have these problems. Fuck the drugs. Fuck the cigarettes. Fuck that dumb bitch. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. That's the fucking. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? We're getting back what belongs to us. That's it. To me, discipline is truly the ability to stay consistent to yourself or the self you want to create. I'll say that again because that should be in a book somewhere and I should trademark it. The ability to stay consistent to yourself or the future self you're trying to create. Now, honestly, I'm talking to myself right now because I've been slacking and I know it, but I'll be honest, my slacking is still better than 90% of the world and I'm not trying to compare myself, but the whole point of seeking to improve discipline is a trend upward. It's not a linear progress. You're going to go up. You're going to come down a little bit, up, down, up. The point is, is you want to trend up. And that is what this video is going to cover, is how to trend up, how to increase your discipline. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about discipline deeper. Because a lot of these new videos, the self-improvement wave, it's getting popular, which is good. It's a good start. But a lot of these videos, they make discipline out to be this cruel, hard, life-sucking, grueling process, which at face value, it is. It is hard. You're out of your comfort zone. You're doing things you don't necessarily want to do. But you're doing it for the greater good of yourself and those around you, honestly. But at face value, it is hard. It is hard to buy in. There's a lot of friction, resistance to get into it initially. But behind the face value of the hardness of discipline is freedom. Freedom in creating the life you want. Freedom in creating more time for yourself. Freedom of pursuing and completing your goals and living to your highest potential. The potential that God designed you to live for. And that's why discipline is so important. In order to make this video more digestible, I want to split discipline up into two categories or two levels. The first level being self-discipline and the second level being success discipline. Success discipline to me is your ability to be disciplined in an extension of yourself. And what I mean by extension is business, a business you're starting, a sport you're playing. If you're an athlete and you're trying to compete, if you are a content creator, whatever it may be, the extension of yourself requires discipline. And that to me is success discipline. In order to have success discipline, you first have to have self-discipline. And self-discipline, simply put, is denying cravings of the flesh. Cravings of the flesh are getting home and just wanting to stuff your face with junk food. Your flesh, your body, is craving the junk food. And that is a craving of the flesh. And it is up to you, your mind, to deny that craving of the flesh. Another example, girls. Now, if you're a girl watching this, it could be guys, but because I'm a guy, I'm going to talk about this and girls. We all have that craving to you know, go get some, talk to girls. And it comes from a couple different reasons. One, obviously, testosterone. Or two, loneliness. And I feel like a lot of guys can relate to this one. It gets lonely, especially when you're on a journey of discipline. And that's not to say you can't have a girlfriend. It's not to say you can't have a boyfriend if you're a girl. But it is to say that you have to be very selective with who you choose to be with. I have been in a handful of relationships that have gone sideways. I've also indulged in a handful of decisions I wish I could take back. But the point is, is every time I indulged in that, I, one, lost a serious amount of momentum towards my goals. And it took me a while to recover. So I wasted time for something that was meaningless. Now, you could argue I've gained experience, which is true. And I do feel that everyone does have to get out there experience and then decide for themselves what kind of person and what kind of life they want to live so i do value those experiences i had but going forward i know not to mess with certain types of people and that's not just girls that's also friends people you associate with because i know my goals and the outcomes i want on my life are directly impacted by the people i choose to include in my life i'm gonna say that again because that's a good quote i know that my outcomes and my goals in life are dependent on the people I include in my life. So therefore, I have to make sure I include 
the right people in my life to support where I'm going. Because people either give or people take. And if they're not giving, they're taking. And if they're taking, you need to cut them out, which is a, another topic for another video. The point being is you have to remain disciplined because it is very easy to get sidetracked in today's world. Those are two examples of cravings of the flesh. I think that from those examples, you can infer, infer other examples. Other examples would be going home and just wanting to lay down and watch TV instead of doing something else. That is a craving of the flesh. A uh, craving of the flesh is watching mindless, brain-rotting reels or TikToks instead of reading or doing something productive. Those are all cravings of the flesh that you have to learn how to eliminate and how to stop in order to build your self-discipline. And I don't want anyone to take this video the wrong way. This is not a linear progression. This is not something you watch this video or another video, wake up, and you're like, all right, I got discipline now. That's not how it works. It's not a linear progress. You have a couple days of good, a day of bad. A couple days of good, a couple days of bad. It goes up and down, but the point is, is you want to trend up. If you're trending upwards, you're, you're increasing your self-discipline. And the only way to increase your self-discipline is literally by placing yourself in those situations and denying your body, your flesh, of those cravings. Because your body is hardwired a certain way genetically, subconsciously, you're programmed. You're a programmed person. You program yourself and the world programs you as well. And so you have to break out of those patterns to create new outcomes. Nothing changes if nothing changes. That was Theo Vaughn, and that was a good quote. And within self-discipline, you can break it up into two categories. The obvious, like what I just listed, the obvious being cravings of the flesh, such as sex, alcohol, drugs, mindless activities, junk food, laziness, whatever it may be. Those are the obvious cravings of the flesh. And quite honestly, I would say that those are easier to conquer than the not so obvious level of self-discipline. And the not so obvious level of discipline is comfort. Your brain is designed to protect you. Your brain wants to keep you safe. And your brain's rationale for keeping you safe is keeping you out of uncomfortable situations. Now, unfortunately, those uncomfortable situations are where you build self-discipline. Those uncomfortable situations are where you build your character and you develop as a human being. You need those uncomfortable situations. What could the uncomfortable situations be? Going to the gym for the first time, starting a new diet, going out for a walk, doing something uncomfortable. And even larger, it could be not talking to the girl you want to talk to because you're too scared or you're afraid of rejection. Not making sales calls because you're scared of rejection. That's what I'm on right now. That's what I'm trying to conquer. I need to make some sales calls and I'm being a little bitch. I should probably, I might censor that because I don't know. I want to try to get monetized quick. You know what I'm saying? But those are the not so obvious cravings of comfort. Now you could argue they're intertwined, but I think it's just easier to digest when you separate them into two different categories. So unfortunately, and also fortunately, you have to conquer your body's cravings of comfort through placing yourself in uncomfortable situations. Go up and talk to that girl. Go up and make the sales call. Go up and apply for that job you don't think you'll be able to get. You want a new job? Go up and walk into a business and just ask for one. Like, There are a lot of things you could be doing, but you're not doing. And you get mad at yourself for the outcomes you're not receiving on the actions you're not completing. It's a reverse logic. And what happens more so, more than often is instead of pointing the finger at yourself, you start pointing your fingers at others. And you're like, because of them, I can't do Y. Because of X, I can't do Y. And that is a terrible mindset to have. And if you have that mindset, people like me and millions of others are going to tear you apart in this life because we take accountability, as should you. And that's not to brag or be cocky. That's just a fact of life. Protein, protein break real quick. Now, in terms of combating cravings of the flesh, the obvious cravings, you have to separate yourself from the moment. You have to be able to say, say this was a milkshake, right? Say this was junk food and it was just sitting on the counter. Someone just left it there, whatever. You have to be able to look at it, recognize first that you want the shake, right? I'm craving this sugar, this junk food. I want it. So once you recognize it, you recognize that that is a thought and that is not you because you set a goal earlier to lose weight and this milkshake is not going to help you reach that goal. So once you recognize one, the thought is not your own, but the thought is that of the body. That is step one. 
Step two is separating yourself from the, the craving. So you can do this physically, but better and more effectively is mentally because mentally is what's going to build that real self-discipline. Now, if you're in the beginning, you can physically remove yourself or physically relocate yourself away from it. An example of this is if you're losing weight or trying to lose weight, removing all the junk food from your house. Is that really discipline? I don't, I personally don't believe so. Discipline is being able to look at it and walk away from it. So the more effective and better long-term answer is to separate yourself from the craving, realize that the craving is not your own. And from there, remind yourself of your goals, remind yourself of what you want and not what the body wants, because what you want is more important to you than what the body wants. So separating yourself from the craving in the moment is honestly the best way to prevent this. If you want to get real deep in philosophy, you can ask yourself, what about this is making me crave it so much to the point where I have to sit here for a minute and really argue with myself over consuming it? And oftentimes it's going to be stress. It's going to be anxiety. It's going to be negative emotions. But those negative emotions can go into consuming junk food. Just remember, this is a milkshake. This isn't a protein shake. can go into consuming junk food or those negative emotions can go into yourself. Those negative emotions can go into a positive outlet, working out, going for a walk, reading, meditating, using those negative emotions and redirecting them to something positive is the best strategy to improve self-discipline. So to summarize, recognize the thought, the craving of what you have. If it's, if it's junk food, sex, drugs, whatever it may be, recognize the craving Secondly, separate yourself from the craving, remind yourself of your goals and how that craving is not going to support your long-term goals. And just remember, every time you give into a craving that goes against the goal you have set for yourself, you are sacrificing your future self for a short-term pleasure. How long would it take you to consume a milkshake? The point being is you're sacrificing your future self for a short-term pleasure. And 9.9 out of 10 times after you complete that short-term pleasure, you are filled with regret, guilt, and that is a whole nother host of difficulties and issues to deal with mentally. That is a mind fuck. So avoid the mind fuck and complete the actions the way you should complete the actions by not giving in to the cravings and reminding yourself of your goals. Separate from the craving. Remind yourself of the goal. Remind yourself of who you want to be, where you're heading, and why you want to get there, and why you started in the first place. And remove yourself from the thought of the craving. And that will bring you success. The not so obvious craving, comfort, this one's harder. Because you have to have some balls, for a lack of a better term. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to face risk. I think that's the best way to put it. You have to be willing to take risk. And the risk is going up to the girl and risking rejection. The risk is making a cold call and risking a rejection, the risk of going to the gym. There really is no risk, but in your head, you're going to make out all these risks to be. And that's another topic, maybe for another video, is how your mind will distort and immediately think of all the worst possible outcomes could, that could happen from a single event. And that is how your mind tricks you you into being comfortable. That has a, That is how you crave comfort, is by using a lot of worst case scenarios to justify not taking action. And that is your mind protecting yourself from risk and your mind pushing you towards fulfilling your cravings of the obvious junk food, sex, whatever, or the not so obvious comfort. So you have to recognize that and you have to be able to stop that in its tracks. Otherwise, you're in for a hard, long, miserable life because if you're watching this video, chances are you dream of a better life for yourself you dream of a better you and you're not going to get there unless you put the work in lastly i don't want to talk about this as if i'm perfect because i'm not i slack i mess up daily i don't do the things i know i should be doing each and every day but the point being is this is not like i said earlier this is not a one and done thing you can't just decide in your head oh i'm a disciplined person no that's unfortunately not how it works And just like anything else in life, if you really want it and it's something of value, you have to put something in. You have to give something up to obtain what you
you want. You have to give something up to get something. And you have to give up your pleasures, your short-term pleasures. Once you have your goals written down, you understand what you have to do to complete each goal, how long it's going to take to get there, and what it requires of you to achieve it, then everything else becomes black and white. You know for a fact now what support your what supports your goals, what doesn't support your goals, and from there you can make decisions. If you know your goals down to a T, people that enter your life that don't support your goals, and they might not directly support your goals, or they might indirectly not support your goals by taking up your attention, your time, your focus, whatever it may be, you have to recognize that and remove it. But it's a lot easier to recognize once you have your goals written down and you know them. Now, this is going to be, this is longer than I wanted to, but I, I want to keep talking because I feel like I'm spending some gold right now. The reason you see all this self-improvement talk around writing your goals down every day or writing your goals down and reading them to yourself every morning is because by reading your goals and writing them down, you're reinforcing them in your head, your subconscious. So you're subconsciously programming yourself to focus on those goals. And by focusing on those goals, you're now eliminating everything in life that doesn't support your goals. And this, again, is not a one-day change. This is something that after a week, you start to notice your mind has better capability to recognize what supports your goals and what doesn't support your goals. After a month, it's improved more. After two months, it's improved more. It just keeps progressing. That is the importance of having goals, and that's how goals tie into discipline. If you really want to boil it down into like a trifecta, goals, consistency, discipline. Create your goals, be consistent with them, create your self-discipline, create a disciplined version of yourself. And that is, in my opinion, how you do it. And to me, the best place to start for anyone that is not doing this already, go to the freaking gym. The gym is the best place to build discipline. I don't care what you have to say about it. I've met so many people that have changed their lives from the gym, including myself. The gym is the only place you directly get what you put in. And it's not an overnight process. It is a long process. I've been lifting for like seven years, but I've never gotten, I've never put something in and not gotten something out of it. It is the most, it is concrete evidence of discipline. Discipline with going to the gym, discipline with eating right, discipline with getting sleep, water, whatever. All those factors of that you can control through discipline lead to the result of whatever your goals are, more muscle, improved mile time, stronger lifts, whatever it may be, discipline has a direct relation to those outcomes. So you can manipulate those outcomes by preserving your own discipline in those scenarios. And I think that is a good place to end this video. If you guys like the video, let me know. But really, and quite honestly with you, I'm posting this for myself because one, I know for a fact I'm going to be successful one day and it'd be so cool to look back on all this and watch it and watch me as a crow as a person and honestly if i'm feeling like soft one day you're feeling like a baby i now have a video to come watch that's me talking to myself so whatever you can like it dislike it whatever doesn't matter to me but if you did like it go ahead and like it, it doesn't hurt anybody